Hi, I'm Paweł Spechalski and the current meters are awesome. If the all-in-one flight controller or the ESC or the PDB or anything else that's measuring your current going from the battery to the motors calib calibrated the thing correctly and you know exactly the calibration value for your current meter, then they are the best thing since the sliced bread. And usually this is correct. However, from time to time, either the value provided by the manufacturer is just just wrong and doesn't make any sense and what you see in the OSD does not match real the consumption of the electricity from the battery or also in some of the cases you have no bloody idea what the correct calibration value for the current sensor is and then and then unfortunately either you have to ignore the current meter completely because to be honest no value is better than the wrong value or you should calibrate the current meter in this video we will go through the two methods of the calibration of the current meter one which is in theory simpler and basically only requires you to fly and take some notes and the second one that requires you to have the external current meter which is a more accurate and to be honest allows you to calibrate absolutely every kind of the current meter let's begin with the most more complex one that requires the external clamp meter to measure the current and then we will go to the second one that only requires you to fly the method with the external current meter requires you to have the current meter it has to be the current meter with the possibility to measure a dc current because the battery and the drone are using a dc current i'm using the unity ut 210e but any compatible with the possibility to measure a dc current will be good a battery a drone with the propellers and the connection with the configurator we will be calibrating the readings in the software you are using i will be using inav but the procedure is almost exactly the same for other types of the flight controllers when the motors are spinning because we do not want our drone to fly away we have to well <laughs> fix the problem of the flyaway and instead of propellers generating thrust downwards we want them to generate thrust upwards how to do it we just have to replace the prop propeller this propeller is flipped 180 and goes over here this one is flipped 180 goes over here this one flipped 180 goes over here and this one flipped one more time 180 goes over here let me do it and then let's continue propellers are removed and right now they are close to the motors they were installed like i told you before this one is 180 goes over here this one 180 goes over here this one 180 goes over here and this one will of course 180 and goes over here thanks to this without changing the rotation of the motor this motor while rotating clockwise will generate thrust upwards and push the quad to the workbench instead of flying this thing away now let me put the nuts and then let's continue it's pavel from the future that edited this video unfortunately you will not be able to see the values from the current matter because it turned out that it just never fit inside of the view of the camera don't worry i'm telling exactly what are the values uh, from the current matter as well and if you miss that in the next part then remember the value read by the current matter was 7.7 .7 amps and it pretty quickly stabilized on that reading so let's go back to the test almost ready now let's install the battery where the battery should be all the time that means on the quad well that's kind of obvious let's secure it and now the clamp meter clamp meter this one measures up to 100 amps we will not go that far so the 20 amp measurement with the dc option will be fully enough so let me clamp the clamp meter on top of the battery now it will be slightly complicated to connect it to the quad and be able to clamp it bear in mind it doesn't matter if you will connect to the positive or negative wire the same current will be flowing through both of them so now everything is zeroed let's connect to the 
PC. Let's connect to the configurator and let's make sure that none of the wires will do anything stupid. And while being inside of the configurator in INAV, you have to go to the outputs, enable motors and well, yeah, start spinning the motors while paying attention what is the current consumption on the meter and what is the current consumption measured by the sensor. Let's start. Always please remember to turn off the possibility to change the motor speed. The current showed the approximately 7.7 .7 amperes, while the configurator over here was showing only around 6 amperes of the current. That means that our cu current sensor is not correctly calibrated and what it is showing are just too low of the values. Now, with having those two values, 7.7 .7 measured by using external uh, current sensor and the around six measured by the internal power sensor, we either have to solve the problem using the proportions or just find the link in the description of this video when I prepared a very simple but still working perfectly spreadsheet into which you will just have to enter the measured current by the external sensor and the measured current by the internal sensor. You will also have to provide the current current sensor calibration value. In my case, this is in, this in the uh, voltage and current sensor value is 179. And as the result, you will get the new current sensor calibration value that you will have to enter in your configurator. The method with the charger is, well, definitely it's cheaper because you do not have to have the clamp meter to measure the current going from your battery to your drone. And to some extent also it's more fun and it's simpler because you do not have to play with propellers. You only have to have a quad and you have to have the battery and just go flying. Go flying uh, like you are flying almost all the time. It can be a special session, it can be just one flight in the session. And But please try not to deplete the battery completely. Try to find the moment when you are just at the end of the capacity of the battery. It, the battery is more like depleted in two thirds of, the, of, its, of, its, of its electricity stored inside. And then let, but before you turn off the OSD, note down the value of the milliamp hours that your flight controller with its current sensor thinks it consumed during the flight. And note this, value with the battery you used for the test and also mark which battery you used for the test. Because if you will mix the value and the battery later you will not be able to correctly complete the task. Then when you will be back home connect your battery to the charger that like you would be charging your battery in normal circumstances. Only instead of storage really charge it to the max with relatively low current, rather not exceeding 1C. And at the end of the charging process, note down the value, the number of the milliamp hours the charger thinks and actually did put inside of the battery. We will replace the external current meter with different source of the information of how much current, how much electricity was taken from the battery during flight. Please do remember that this is not as precise and not as perfect as the method with the clamp meter, because some of the energy put into the battery during the charging process are wasted into heat and not everything can be taken back from the battery during flight. And But the error should not really exceed around 10%, so in general, usually, you should be fine. 
do not try to balance the battery fully when the charger will beep that okay the fast charge done this is the value that you will have to use and then take this information go to the second link in the description of the video where i prepared a second spreadsheet into which you enter the value given to you in the milliamp hours by the flight controller at the end of the flight the value that your charger set it put into the battery during the charging process and the current matter calibration value got from your Imuflight, Betaflight, INAV, Ardu Pilot or whatever else. As a result, you will get the new calibration value for your current sensor that should give much nicer and more accurate readings than just using some random values provided by, well, sometimes nobody really knows who. And that's all. Those were two methods of how to calibrate your current sensor on the drone. The first one, the better, but also slightly more expensive when you have to have the clamp meter. But the clamp meter might be useful into other uh, things as well. So it's not that bad idea to have even the cheap clamp meter at home and gives really pretty nice results in terms of the calibration. And the second one that uses the modern chargers to one more time compute the improved calibration value based on the proportion that doesn't require you to have any external measuring devices. Only the battery, the quad and the, well, the charger with the option to measure amount of electricity charged into the battery. Thank you very much for watching. That's all for today and until the next one. Bye bye.